a lucky country, a country bestowed with all of nature's natural beauty, with parad paradisical climate and an abundance of natural resources. This title, albeit a self-proclaimed one, is a title that was given in the 1950s to my country, to Australia. Today, while many Australians still take pride in talking or thinking about their country, I think this title, The Lucky Country, is a throwback to the past rather than being an embodiment of the present. Australia is losing some of its unique appeal, losing some of its allure. The reason what, why, what is happening to Australia, my country, the lucky country, Deeply concerns me. For me, the lucky country is more than just being about natural attributes, nature, the climate, etc. These are just things that we have, we didn't work for. For me, the lucky country is about the story of immigrants. Immigrants who made a choice to leave their home, to uproot their families, to travel to a foreign land. Immigrants who made a choice to take a risk. A choice that the risk would pay off with hard work, sweat and tears. This is the real reason why Australia became lucky. This is the real reason why I can say I'm lucky to live in Australia, a lucky country. So what is going wrong? What is, what is it that I'm talking about? Let, it, let me tell you. Australians, not the majority, but a not insignificant group, seem to think that by having an Australian passport or by living in Australia, it makes them a special being. It makes them think that they are above others and can look down on other groups and look, look down on them as being inferior. One of the results of this is that certain groups, groups like immigrants, often get mistreated. Don't you think this is amazingly ironic? Except for the Aborigines, there's no one in Australia other than immigrants or ancestors of immigrants. This superiority complex mutates throughout society in the form of cancer spreading in many forms, from ill will, to contempt, to racism, to crime and violence. These signs are visible today, some just bubbling below the surface, waiting for a catalyst to ignite the tensions further. This is what is happening in Syria today may just be one of those events. This beckons the question, why? Australians, again I use that term loosely, act in a way which can only be described as self-preservation. They push back, resist and condemn everything related to immigrants. They are the ones which create and spread rhetoric about how immigrations, Im immigrants are a burden on society, just, justifying this by saying that they suck up on social security. Or in fact, if they do get a job, they're the ones that are taking jobs of honest, hard-working Australians. But not to be 100% critical of them, maybe it is not their fault that they are ignorant to the fact that immigrants tend to be the ones that give to society and not take. Immigrants are the people that are willing to work three jobs to make a life in their new country sacrificing a lot, often leaving their dignity and pride at the door while they're taking jobs that nobody else wants. But maybe it's not their fault. Maybe this is just symptomatic 
of our education and social system today that we let breeding these ignorant and incompetent fools. Truthfully, I don't know what the reason is for what is happening to Australia today. Just like I don't know what the answer is. All I know is that this is a story which is very close to my heart. And not just because I'm Australian, but because of my roots. In the aftermath of World War II, my grandfather left his home, waved goodbye to his homeland in Holland, and set sail on a journey to Australia. In the hope, and maybe the belief, that there was, that there was the promised land. He took his wife and his five children, my mother was 12 years old, and they, they began a journey. While this story is special to me, it is no more special than the journey of countless other immigrants who took the same path before and after him. What is special though is the collective journeys and stories of all the immigrants. The adventure, the adventures that they had, the perseverance that they displayed, the courage, the patience, everything the blood, the sweat and the tears, all of this collectively made, helped make Australia what it became. I can only hope today that the actions of our nation and individuals today and in the future will not destroy what generations of immigrants fought so hard for in making of in the making of my Australia the lucky country. <laughs>